are able to separate photosynthetic pigments using chromatography. To do this, we take fresh green leaves and grind the leaves up using acetone and sand. Grinding like this breaks open plant cells and chloroplasts, releasing the pigments. Adding acetone dissolves the photosynthetic pigment into it, which will enable them to move up the chromatography paper later. Taking some chromatography paper, a line is drawn 2cm from the bottom. We draw the line in pencil so the line does not move up with the solvent and does not obscure the results. A concentrated spot of pigments from the ground up sample is created using a capillary tube. The spot is created by repeatedly placing the capillary tube with the sample onto the chromatography paper to create a concentrated spot. Each time you do this, you must wait for the chromatography paper to be dry before you add more of the sample. The results are clearer if the spot is small and concentrated. The chromatography paper is placed into a solvent below the pencil line and left until the solvent has reached the top of the paper. The paper from the solvent is removed and the pencil line marking where the solvent moved up to is drawn. This is called the solvent front. The solvent evaporates quickly and so the extent to which it has travelled up the paper needs to be marked while it can be seen. The pigment should have separated out and there should be different spots on the paper at different heights above the pencil line. Three things will influence how far the pigment will travel up the chromatography paper. Solubility of the pigment. The more soluble the pigment is in the solvent, the further it will travel. Interaction with the chromatography paper. Molecules that interact more strongly with the plate or paper will not travel as far. Size of the pigments. The smaller the pigment, the further it will travel. These are the separate pigments found in plants. To identify the different pigments, you calculate the RF value. The RF value is equals the distance traveled by the component divided by the distance traveled by the solvent. It is important when measuring the distance from the pencil line to the pigment, we measure up to the middle of the pigment each time we do this. This will standardize the measurements. If we wanted to find out what an unknown pigment is, I could calculate the RF value and then compare this to the RF value for known substances. Sometimes more than one pigment can have the same RF value for a particular solvent and chromatography paper. So multiple chromatograms may need to be run with different solvents or chromatography paper to find out the exact identity of the unknown pigment. Hi, my name is Mr. Science, aka Salim. If you're new to the channel, please remember to like and subscribe. And for more teaching or resources, you can visit my website at www.mrscience.co.uk.